Now you may have noticed today I'm using an old gas canister to create my burner. Um, I was fortunate enough to buy off a dozen of these from a car boot sale and they're in a pre-stripped state. So basically all the um, paint has been removed and the gas has been released out of it already, which is good for me because they're things I don't really want to do. Why? Because it's not really safe. Obviously it's a gas canister and it's full of gas. And if you grind, cut or drill it, you'll like to go pop uh, and pop in a pretty nasty way. Um, to work on something like this, basically you have to remove the, uh, the bung at the top there with a the spanner, um, release the gas that's in there as much as possible into the atmosphere, which can't be good, um, and then basically fill it full of water to the very, very top so there's no air or gas pockets in there before you can even consider doing anything like cutting or grinding it. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you are confident in your own abilities to make sure that you're working safely. Um, it's not something I'd recommend for that reason. The next reason, and the elephant in the room, I guess, because no one ever talks about this, is you don't own that gas canister. So if you rent this for 50 quid or whatever, um, you're getting the gas that's in it. You never own the canister. The canisters, as far as I'm aware, here in the UK at least, are owned by the gas companies, and they're expected to go back there for refilling or recycling. Um, in theory, for you to dispose of this, you'd need to get permission from that company, and I can't see them giving it you. So anyone who makes fire pits or fire burners out of um, old gas canisters. Technically, they ain't yours to chop up. I'm gonna consider that. And I'd rather not have that knock on the door. So what are your alternatives? Now this is a expansion vessel for a central heating system. It's not quite the same size, but it's pretty close. Um, the advantage of this is you've already got a big open top on there. So let me take this off here. You have to remove the, uh, the rubber bladder that's in, in there inside it already. Um, but you have a nice opening to put your chimney on. Um, and it's quite lightweight gauge metal. Um, obviously that's not going to last as long, but it lasts long enough. Um, so it's easy to work with, easy to cut. Um, and the good thing is, it's not full of gas, it's not going to blow up, and it belongs to you, not to the gas company. So they are my go-to solution for uh, most things in terms of using bur making burners uh, and if you can they will get hold of um, so keep your eyes outside of the road people took them out when they go broke uh, or in skips and stuff uh, obviously have permission if you're going to take them but as I say they are yours to own if you can find them another option would be balloon gas so they come in different designs and slightly different sizes um, but if you can find a florist shop that does balloons and stuff the chances are they've got some balloon gas canister they can't get rid of um, it says on the instructions here you can basically release whatever excess of gas is in there and just take it to the recycle center or put it in the normal bins but i know from experience the bin people don't like taking these away and um, they just think the gas canisters and they're dangerous obviously they're not full of anything explosive it's just helium so you can chop into them do what you want although i would release any pressures uh, off the top first uh, and you can own them, they're yours to own because they're yours to dispose of as you see fit. The gas company does not own these, uh, even says so, so in the instructions. Um, so they're a good option. They're not quite the same size, they're a little bit smaller, um, but they're still a nice size for a um, you know, mid sized burner and they're still a useful size. So they would be my go to option, especially if you can find a friendly forest, florist or a card shop that's got loads of these you want to get rid of. Um, have a nice, friendly chat, and you might find yourself a few uh, gas canisters for nothing. So we did a bit of a Tony Hart today. Um, so I'm not actually going to be constructing the individual parts because I've already done it. Um, I actually did it a few years ago and I never finished them. So it's something I've never came back to. It's been sat in the pit of doom for a long time. <laughs> right, so basically the legs I made from uh, an old trampoline. Um, a trampoline that landed on the neighbor's roof uh, and caused a bit of an insurance claim. And then I pulled it off and we chopped it and made it into other things. Um, so you can see this, there's a big round part that went around the, the, around the outside of the trampoline with springs attached to. Um, and then I used some of the, the upright parts uh, to make the feet. Uh, it all links together quite nicely. Um, and so once I got it perfectly plumb, um, well, zapped them together, I think that's a funky set of legs. Really like that. Um, I did do some twisty ones as well uh, from the same trampoline on a previous cancer I did say a long, long time ago. Uh, I'll ping a picture of that up. They, they took forever to get right. Um, when you do anything that's not kind of in straight lines, it's usually quite tricky to get them exactly right and these legs twisted around each other. So you could have a go at that, but it was pretty annoying to make. <laughs> Next is the, the gas canister. 
So that'll be welded onto the legs when I can get it nice and straight. Uh, and obviously from the front of that, I chopped the, the door. So I just made a nice big door. I'm probably gonna drill a couple of holes in the front of it for ventilation for when it's closed. Uh, so it keeps burning nicely, even with the door shut. And I have a brass hinge. Now I'm pretty sure it'll su survive this, the, the heat because I don't think it's gonna get over 800 degrees, uh, at least uh, on the outside of it. But um, I've used steel ones in the past and basically they don't last. Um, as soon as it gets hot and then it gets wet in the rain, uh, the rust seize up and they're, they're no good. Uh, so the plan basically is to weld through the brass holes so it's in place. Um, it should work all being well. We'll soon find out. Uh, and being brass, hopefully it won't seize up in time with the heat and the, the rain. Uh, for the handle for the door, got one of those. And that used to be attached on top. So it used to be two ca carry handles, which is basically chopped off. And that becomes a door handle. Um, so it should look pretty nice. Right, second time lucky. <laughs> so we got our body, we've got our door, we've got our handle, we've got our hinge. All we need now is a chimney for the top. Uh, so I've got a few bits of pipe I've been saving to, to do this job. Um, hopefully one of them will look the right size uh, and go on there nicely. So we'll, uh, we'll find that from outside and we'll get the welder out and do some work. Let's do it. On the one I made a few years ago, I actually drilled a few holes at the bottom. Um, my thinking was to let air through so that it keeps burning well when the door's shut. I mean, the door's not exactly a tight seal anyway, so it would keep burning to some extent. Um, unfortunately, it didn't really work because as soon as the wood started building up or the ash started building up within the burner, um, ash started jumping out of the holes. Um, so you don't really want that all over your patio or wherever you're burning. Uh, so this one, I'm going to change the design slightly and I'm going to have some holes in the front of the door. So it's a third of the way up the actual uh, burner. Uh, that way, hopefully nothing will come jumping out and you've still got good airflow uh, for when the door's shut, if you wanted to shut the door and it'll keep burning. I've got a center line down there and then I've got the line across, which is uh, following the, the loop in the middle. Uh, it looks like my door's slightly out of square, but never mind. Uh, I'm going to put a hole at each side of the door and possibly one in the middle as well. It's going to be a bit hot to handle, so in hindsight I should have probably planned the hole in a different place to the handle. Um, but you're probably using gloves anyway if you're opening and closing it, so I'm sure it'll be fine. For the chimney, I'm going to use a bit of old boiler flue pipe like this. Now this particular one is steel, which is obviously important if we're going to be welding it. Um, a lot of them are aluminium, so just look out for that. Um, it's relatively lightweight steel, so as a chimney it's not going to be top heavy and the burner's not going to be falling over all being well. Uh, I'm going to cut this one about a foot and a half, so probably about half of this length, um, so that when we're sat in the chair at the side of the burner, we've not got smoke in our faces. That's quite a thick steel, and that is paper thin, so hopefully we're not going to blow a hole straight through the chimney. Right, that's the chimney on. The welds aren't the best, not my finest hour. Uh, but say it's pretty tricky when you're trying to weld from thick steel to uh, the really, really thin stuff, because it blew through really easy, so they're quite high build welds. Um, and it looked a bit messy because I had to patch places as well. But uh, we ground it back with a flappy paddle and it's not too bad. So we're all done, I'm quite happy with it. Um, there's a couple of things I might change in hindsight, so if you're going to do this you might want to take note. Uh, basically the hinge was second hand, so the solution seemed to work quite well as it is. Um, however, because it's worn and old, there's a slight drop to it as you open the door. It's only a fraction of a mil, um, but it means it doesn't easily close just by swinging it. You have to lift it a little bit to make it close. Not a major thing, but it'd be nice if you could just push it and it's shut. 
Um, the other thing is the, the pipe, as I mentioned before, was really, really thin gauge stuff, so it's tricky to weld. Um, and I've had to clean up the welds with the, the, the grinder and stuff. Um, if you were to do this, uh, and you want to make yourself an easier job, then get some thicker gauge piping. Um, you can get duct piping and stuff from um, from ventilation companies. I think it's about 40 quid for five meters or something crazy. So it's not expensive stuff, and say so it's a bit thicker gauge. So it might be worth investing in that if you're going to do at least more than one. Uh, but no, I'm relatively happy with it. I just need a bit of wood now and some marshmallows. That'd be good. And it to stop raining outside. That'd be nice too. You can't have it all. Hope that helps, guys. Take care.